Um, it's an honor. It's a privilege and it's scary as hell. <laughs> you don't want to mess it up. Um, but Marvel has been kind of fantastic in letting me take the essence of Candy and Tyrone and really take them and kind of bring them into 2018. So it's been fun, and with actors like Olivia and Aubrey, it's been very rewarding. Um, I've read a lot of books about other people's stories. Is there anything in particular that you guys are pulling from, like any particular storyline? You know what? I think you know the original Spider-Man stories were always good, but they they were Spider-Man stories. Um, so we looked a lot of that. The first you know the, the first twelve issues in particular of the limited series. Um, which I thought was great. I mean, I, I, the idea of these two lost kids is fantastic. We, we took it apart, sold it for parts, moved it to New Orleans and rebuilt it. But um, I, honestly, I think what I say about that is weirdly progressive work for its time, weirdly sexist and racist for ours, so we had to change it. You've got a good start on a show with a lot of heroes. Yeah. Um, can you talk about the difference between that and having just two core heroes? Um... It's kind of awesome. I feel like two might be my number. I feel like when you work on something like, even Daredevil is challenging because you're trying to tell a Matt story first and foremost. Um, there's something that at least works for my skill set in the sense of having this beautiful intercut. And I don't know if you guys have seen the first hour yet, but um, there's something we found in seeing Tandy's pain and seeing Tyrone's pain in two different spheres of the world and intercutting it and making sure you understand it's of a piece. And there's just something kind of beautiful in the sense of two, it becomes a big part of our mythology that kind of became my jam. When we were talking to Gina about directing it, she was like, oh, this is two damaged souls. That's totally my jam. And now I get it. It's just like, that's, it's a great story to tell. And it, and it allows you to be a little bit cubist in telling a character story. So taking on more modern day themes mm -hmm. and like applying it to the old ways of the characters. Yep. How challenging was that? Um, sadly, a lot of it was there. I mean, you know, in the original Tyrone story, he had a stutter and was unable to stop his friend from being shot. We, you know, we changed that a little, but I definitely wanted to talk about police brutality, about yeah. the quick trigger finger on boys in hoodies that, you know, fuck, it doesn't seem to be going away. Not, unfortunately, like, that's one of the things that has been very common in our modern day culture, unfortunately. And uh, I, like, I, I, that was one of the first things I thought of. It's like, wow, are we gonna, are we gonna see something like that? Yeah. Like, <laughs> more I, relevant to today's youth? Yeah, and I think we, you know, I think it's something we have to deal with. I think, you know, the young boy with the hooded sweatshirt needs to kind of, um, he needs a hero and we need to see ourselves in him. I think what Aubrey does in that character is amazing. And the same with Olivia, you know, this is a strongly feminist show. We're gonna deal a little with opioid abuse. We're gonna deal a lot wow. with um, with what it's like to be a woman. You know, it's. It, I always talk about how Peter Parker and Tony Stark had problems, but I don't think, like me growing up, they didn't understand real problems. And so hopefully these two will just be a different kind of story. Uh, can you tell us about like the new backgrounds for Tandy and uh, Ty for the series? Because it seems like very far from the original. Yeah, it's not. Again, I wanted to keep the characters. Um, I like the idea that. They were tied together. We're going to kind of unravel the mythology in an untraditional way over the course of the 10 episodes. But I'm trying to think of something non spoiler that I can say. Well, we can tell you from the trailers, it looks like Ty has a really loving family and a yeah. much better life in this show than he did in the comics. Yeah, I think that was that was part of it. I, I, a, I didn't think I should be the person to tell an inner city story, but I thought the idea of moving Tyrone to a richer... Um, I keep calling it a gilded cage. His parents saw a tragedy, and then they said, we're going to take him out of this neighborhood. We're going to take him out of this school. We're going to put him in a perfect place. But it didn't solve all his problems. So I thought that was an interesting way for someone like me to tell a Tyrone story. Um, and Tandy, uh, we put it on the other side. We, we started her off well off, but then we really wanted to take everything away from her and see how her cynicism and that dealt with it. I say a prayer often. Um, the listen, I think I think Olivia and Aubrey are doing such a great job that I'm waiting for Peter Parker to call and ask them for them to show up at the beginning of the third movie. 
I might, there's probably 500 lawyers that are going to call me for saying that. Um, I, I think there'll be plenty of opportunities in television and film once people see what these two kids can do. Why wouldn't you want them to play in your sandbox?